Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you are doing well. If you could tell by the image behind me, we're talking truckers, we're talking shipping. We're talking with Eric from Sage News. Eric, how are you doing? Hey, how's it going, buddy? I'm ready to crush it, man. How about you? Yeah, yeah. We've got a lot going on. News is coming really fast and there's going to be situations that are going to happen like that and you really want to be on top of them. Well, there sounds like there might be a, a shipping or trucking apocalypse coming on and we got a news story. What do we got going on? Yeah, let me uh, grab screen here and let me do this one, this one, share screen. So this came out of Freight Waves um, just recently. Let me move this up so you make sure you can see it. Um, just, after, just three years after 2019 trucking bloodbath, another one is on its way. Now, in 2019, we basically turned everything off. COVID basically stopped everything. Um, things weren't coming in from the port, and a lot of truck drivers took a monstrous hit because we kind of went from, you know, 60 to zero within, you know, a very quick downturn time. Yeah. And a lot of truck drivers weren't ready for that. And they actually, you know, went to um, Washington and were protesting and everything else. Well, that same re turning on of the economy spiked a monstrous um, uptick in freight. Prices were going up. Truck drivers were getting the best prices they've ever seen. Um, now, and I always say, if somebody's out there killing it, somebody could be getting killed. And that shippers were actually taking a beating um, in regards to prices and stuff like that. But truck drivers were in demand, supply and demand ruled it out, and off it went. Well, the issue is, is that now, one of the things that truly affects all of our spending is gas prices. We all see it at the pump. We all drive. So if you go out there and you might see, you know, somebody who might like peanut butter sees their peanut butter went up 75 cents, they would notice that. Yeah. But if you're not a peanut butter fan, you might not. Well, gas prices aren't like that. You see gas prices every day. You yeah. fill up your trucks, your cars. When that goes up, that is one of the major ways people stop spending because they need to save money. Yeah. It blows me away too. When, when people, and, and real quick, everyone for uh, some context, if you're new to the economic ninja channel, Eric is a freight broker. So he was an independent driver and then became a broker. So he deals with this every day. And uh, what I wanted to say also was it blows me away when fuel goes up, how you see this surge in thefts of fuel. It just blows my mind that a thief will go and steal fuel uh, when fuel goes up a buck, let's say, uh, rather than go and steal something else. It just sort of blows my mind. They're taking all the risks, going into someone's car and draining it. And these are the times where you need a locking cap. You need to have your vehicles parked in a really good uh, visible location, right? Right. Absolutely. So one of the things that we're dealing with now is as these fuel prices go up, a lot of people are pulling back on their spending. Shippers are you know, pulling back on their shipping and, and, and what they can do and things like that. So one of the things that also we we see is this is um it's a program that basically measures all the analytics of in regards to trucking and, and it's called freight wave sonar and we've got a bunch of squiggly lines so let me interpret um so the blue line is basically what we're dealing with today and the red line is last year now yeah. this is like an index of freight it's sort of like the stock market so the higher the number it's just an index right it's not the actual volume of freight it's an index okay now so what's, what you see normally is December, it, everything kind of bounces down because there's usually a big rush to fill the stores. But then when people are out there buying, there's stores are more concerned about just selling what they've got than actually bringing more freight in. Okay. Uh, and then you have, it spikes back up again right in January because stores want to replenish their supplies that they, they lost out. Once it's replenished, it dips back down again here. And this is, you know, because people aren't buying as much until their taxes come back. That's usually yep. the day people start to spend again. And then it starts to spike up again. Well, back in, you know, end of February into March, when it's kind of spiked up again last year, it shot way up and stayed high. Yeah. This year, it looks like it's going to come down. And between high fuel prices, high inflation, um, shortages, which, you know, that's another thing people aren't talking about. Yeah. You know, you're going to have all food shortages that they just mentioned yesterday. Biden said, we're going to feel some food shortages, all these shortages plus inflation plus high fuel prices. It's starting to take its turn on shipping and trucking. And a lot of these guys that jumped in when the times were good, aren't going to be able to absorb the costs when they go down. Yeah. Uh, and this article kind of explains this. And one of the other things I wanted to show was this chart. 
This is how much a truck driver would be paid a mile approximately on what we call the spot rate, uh, which is a non-contracted rate. It's, hey, I need you. Please come get my freight. Well, just here, we were up at 380 and we're already dropping 40 cents. And that's a big drop for drivers who might have got their truck during, you know, expensive times. They've got a high truck payment. Um, they're used to this three, four dollar freight. And as it starts to drop back down and restabilize near the norm, they're going to be the first ones taking a hit. And when those guys start to basically take that hit, you're going to see a lot of drivers in trouble. And we're going to have another supply chain issue when those trucks collapse, you know, drivers get out of the business because they can't afford to keep their equipment. Now, that's a really good point because of when you buy your equipment or what kind of contracts you're in uh, yesterday can necessarily not necessarily be a benefit tomorrow, right? Because you, you got them at really bad prices, let's say, right? You were talking about the fuel surcharges and how they, they're constantly changing. Yeah, one of the things is, let me stop sharing here. I wanted to talk about fuel surcharges. And real quick, too, I also want to get into the diesel shortage that's upcoming. So let's talk about the surcharges, and we're going to move into diesel shortage. Yeah, so one of the things with regards to fuel surcharge, fuel surcharges uh, fluctuate. When I go into a contract and I bid for a customer, I'll say, let's use simple numbers. It's $2 a mile plus fuel surcharge. The fuel surcharge comes out every Tuesday from the Department of Energy and tells us what the uh, base price for fuel is. Well, what has happened is because fuel has gone up so quick, so fast, a lot of these customers didn't expect that much of a jump that the customers are actually coming back to some of the carriers and saying, look, we didn't expect this much of a jump. We didn't build, you know, we didn't. Uh, properly do it with our customer can we renegotiate this fuel surcharge uh because instead of going up you know doing it every week can we do it every month can we do it every three months because it is fast it's going up so a lot of these customers thought they could absorb that fuel surcharge because normally it might go up a penny or two yeah. <laughs> when it goes up a dollar they have to eat that cost quickly because they don't have the same contract with the receiver or the buyer of the product as they do with the carrier. And that's starting to take a beating on a lot of manufacturers if they're in charge of their shipping. Now, there's another story that's coming out in the last couple of days that's starting to alarm people. And I think it should actually. And this is out of uh, uh, Europe. And their traders are actually warning of a diesel shortage. Have you heard about this because of what's going on with Russia? Yeah, and, and this is also some of the stuff that we've got. Well, we got two. We also have urea, which is a fertilizer, which we've yeah. talked about months ago, which yeah. uh, diesel trucks need. Um, and then, of course, the diesel, the fuel shortage. Remember, when you start to get into conflicts, conflicts, two things become important: energy, yep. oil, yep. and food. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's usually becomes the most uh, important things during conflict. So as conflicts kind of rage on, you're going to see a pullback in regards to, you know, the fuel and stuff like this. And a lot of countries have now started to kind of hoard or limit the amounts that they're putting out because of these concerns. We are the number one consumer of uh, oil. Yeah. We are the number one consumer. China seems to be the number one buyer. Um, they may they know something we don't know, but we are the number one consumer. So as you start to see that diesel uh, oil, as you start to see the oil pullback with everything with Russia and stuff like that, that relates to diesel. As the conflict goes on, the worse that that pullback of uh, oil is going to be, which is diesel. Well, and what's worse is that right now Europe receives about 50 percent of its diesel from Russia. So right now you've got a, a massive shortage of diesel because they're refusing to buy it from Russia, right? right. Uh, the other problem, like Eric was saying, urea is a lot of it is produced in Russia. So now with us not buying it and uh, Europe not buying that, we now have a very serious situation. And the reason why I say serious is let's say this isn't going to last forever. I, I want people to understand that this will not last forever. Conflicts happen. These kind of things happen. Trade disputes, uh, trade uh, imbalances, or they, they get stopped because of a, uh, a war. Um, but the problem is, is if you stop the supply chain, which would be all of a sudden trucks don't have diesel urea to, to move, they now are going to stop bringing the food. That's the most important thing. I can care less about crap coming from China through Amazon. That's the serious situation. Now, Eric, uh, we did that video about um, a, a lot of videos about the death shortage a while ago, and I got so much flack from it. You know, obviously people are like, cancel your death or your, you know, all that stuff system. Sweet. I don't live in a place where I can do that. 
Right. But the facts are, can, can, are there semi trucks that can just shut off their, their deaf systems? Well, that's kind of the theory that they're going with now. The issue is, is right now, no, they, they're not letting them shut it off. But the issue, the, the problem that we could be seeing is what happens with an engine that's completely designed to do that, and now it's not doing that. Yeah, good uh, point. And so because we, we ran into that issue with the sensor issue, a lot of people are like, hey, we're just going to bypass the sensor, and we're going to let the engine just run on that. Well, the issue yeah. is, is now what's, one, warranty, but two, the engine's designed to specifically function with that. And when you, you either, you have to take it all off yeah. and there are EPA lawsuits that have been, they've gone after people for that. If they do it without permission, like a lot of money. Um, so it's not just something that's just an easy decision to make. There's a, there could be repercussions later down with your equipment or with the government. So that's the thing. The, the big takeaway from this right now is I believe it's time to go stock up on death. I mean, because th there's never truly a shortage because the prices are going to explode and that's going to deal with the shortage, right? The trucks that don't need to be on the road are going to stay off the road because urea is too expensive, DEF's too expensive, diesel's too expensive. But the thing is, there's a lot of uh, small mom and pop truckers out there. And it's like, what do we do right now? And sometimes you've got to start figuring out, can you get yourself a five gallon container and fill it up with DEF for an emergency? I mean, that's, you know, when you're sitting at the truck stop, it's a lot cheaper to buy it at a truck stop than it is in those little two gallon little things. They were, I, my, I, my buddy bought a one two gallon uh, uh, carboy, you know, the little two, the small ones in the cardboard, $25 yesterday. Nice. Now, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not at all. And so we took the, our diesel truck, you know, down to Park, Arizona for the weekend. And, you know, we spent $500 in diesel just, <laughs> just to take the truck. And so where it's a fine line too, because although, you know, everybody thinks, well, prices go up because of diesel prices going up. No prices and trucking go up because of supply and demand. Yeah. So yeah. If, if there's a, you know, if there's more trucks than freight, well, freight prices are lower. If there's more freight than trucks, freight prices are higher. That's so right. as right. truck drivers need to also realize, like I said, now when this turns again, because everything happens in waves, the ones that survive will be, you know, better off. And that's just where you have to be like listening to people like us. So, cause there will be a turn at some point back up again. You just want to make sure you're prepared for that bottom. Yeah. Well, Hey guys, we got to wrap this one up, but I want you to look over Eric's shoulder uh, at his logo and it says uh, Sage through the eyes of logistics. And that's what Eric is really big about is logistics. And that's why I think he's uh, an expert in this situation when it comes to shipping, freight, trucking, uh, global logistics. And so guys, check him out on his channel at Sage News. All right. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Eric, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right. Well, that being said, guys, the Economic Ninja is out.